and with palms and branches let us raise our voices unto him with praise saying blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord our
Honor the triple choir of the righteous fathers, Glorious Isaac Damatos and Faustus. They dispel the night of passions by the three branch candlestick of Christ the light, and by their virtues illuminate those who cry. Glory to him who has made you wonderful. Glory to him who has magnified you. Glory to him who through you works healings for all. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
to thee are due, O glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing songs to thy name, O Most High. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. To proclaim thy mercy at dawn and thy truth by night. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. And that they may declare that the Lord my God is fair and there is no injustice in him. to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help The Lord is clothed with strength, and he hath girded himself. O Son of God, who art wondrous in the saints, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. For he established the world which shall not be shaken. O Son of God, who art wondrous in the saints, save us who sing to thee, Come at thy house, O Lord, in the length of days. O Son of God, who art wondrous in the saints, save us who sing to thee. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and immortal Word of God, who for our salvation this will to be incarnate of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, who without change did speak of them and was crucified, O Christ our God.
ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and out of the ages. transfigured on the mountain of Christ our God, and thy disciples beheld thy glory as far as they could bear it, so that when they would behold thee crucified, they would understand that thy passion was voluntary and would proclaim to the world that thou art truly the radiance of the Father. Lord. 
holy art thou, O our God. And unto thee we ascribe glory and the thrice holy hymn to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever.
Peace be to eat that The Lord said, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple. Truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. And when Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their city. Beloved in Christ, it is a blessing and a joy to be behind the altar 
even it is not Sunday. The normal, the most normal thing is to serve the divine liturgy as clergy and as believers, to serve the divine liturgy daily. This is, this is the way it is. Now, we understand that people have to go to work. They have things to do. And the church well, is well aware of that. But today, today, with the providence of God, we have one of our children, one of the of the seminarians who was a deacon for a while, and today he is ready to become a priest. This is another joy and another blessing. So let me highlight today, you know, like priesthood, on the priesthood. Why do we need good priests in our life in general and in this archdiocese in particular? What the priesthood, what, what, what it means like someone to be ordained to the priesthood. And right after, before, before the ordination, I wanted to give you some teaching on, on this. Usually, after the ordination, we give some remarks. But today, you know, like, let me begin with this. The priesthood is done on this earth, but the work of the priesthood is in heaven. Because, you know, like this priesthood was not invented by any human being, but by God himself. So that's why we cannot play with it. Like some people say, why don't we have women, for example, like to be priests? This is not up to me or up to the Holy Synod or up to the someone's because God has decided that. God himself has decided that. So he chose, he chose in the beginning 12 and he lost, we lost one. And then someone came. So he chose 12 to begin his preaching and to begin reaching out to all the whole universe through them. He chose simple people, he chose fishermen, he chose uneducated people, he chose like some of them, you know, like we're ignorant, totally ignorant. But the wisdom of the word is different than the wisdom of God. So that's why, you know, like we have, we have like Arius, for example, the one who split the church. He was like the most eloquent priest in Alexandria. But the church, you know, like was hurt by his education, by his teaching. So he was useless. He was a loser. So that's why he brought all the hurt into the church. So the wise the wisdom of the word, if you like, has destroyed the church. While the wisdom of God will never ever hurt anyone. On the contrary, it completes, it heals, it, it perfects, it, it gives all the blessings to someone like to be called father. And let me tell you something. Most of the people in Montreal at this moment, newcomers, not now, newcomers now, but a few years ago, they were my parishioners in Cyprus, where I served in Cyprus five, day, five years and 10 days. 
it happened this way. I say it like as a joke and people laugh, but my ministry took me there five years and 10 days exactly until the moment they elected me as a bishop 1991. Now, the people in, in, uh, in uh, Montreal, until this moment, they don't, talk, they don't tell me, they don't call me you know, like Sayyidna and your grace and your eminence and something like that. They call me Abuna, means father. Why? Because, beloved in Christ, I served them five years and ten days and I was ordained before because I served in England, I served in Syria, I served in Lebanon, I served in Greece, I served in many places. But the first time ever I became worthy someone to call me father, the time I served in Cyprus. Do you know why? Because I suffered with the people. I carried their pain. I carried their their, you know, like uncertain life, if you like, because Cyprus was a transition and every transition, as you know, that it's very hard. And Cyprus is a small country. There are no opportunities for anyone to work but the Cypriot people. And we respect that. But when our people fled away from war in Lebanon, so they went to Cyprus because, you know, like from ground to ground, it's 30 minutes by plane. Just next door, when the, 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 the weather is clear, you can see the mountains, you know, like if you are in Lebanon, you see the mountains of Cyprus, and if you are in Cyprus, you see the mountains of Lebanon. But because of the ocean, so there is no road. So everything, you know, has to be by plane. And the flight, is only like 35 minutes or 25 minutes. So beloved in Christ, they went there looking for opportunities, looking for a safe haven, looking for like to, and I was ready to catch them to the faith. So that's why, you know, like I suffered with them, with their poverty, with their uncertain, until they were waiting for some hope from this embassy or that embassy from, for a visa here or a visa there until they ended in Montreal. So now when I go to Montreal, you have to see that they, they first of all, it, it pleases me like to hear from them. They call me father. And because it reminds me the time I served them in Cyprus. Beloved in Christ, now today the ordination is not about like someone to add like on uh, you know to the clergy like to add to say in peace let us pray to the lord and you know like become later become careless no today i am ordaining someone to be a father where is he to be a father of your community and believe me believe me if someone, after even after his ordination, is not like a real father to his community, we don't need him. We have many ways to get rid of him. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that, you know, like someone is ordained and he is ordained forever. As long he is following God, and listening and obedient, listening to God, teaching and following his, uh, his instructions and teaching and everything, he will be the priest forever because the priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek means like forever. You know, we look at Jesus Christ as the high priest and is the only true priest in our life. I am his reflection, and they are his reflection. But we are not replacing him. He is the only priest in our life. 
He is the only good shepherd in our life. And we are his servants. So, beloved in Christ, the ordination is something like beyond this, the wisdom of this world. This is a gift. This is a gift for all of us, to all of us. And it's a gift to him in particular. So today we have one ordination, tomorrow we have another. And a week later, next Sunday, not tomorrow, but a week later, we have another one at uh, St. Peter in, in Pomona. So that's why, you know, like after their graduation and after they becoming like ready for the ordination, I didn't have time to ordain them in, 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 in the East. So I came here to have them ordained among their, the people they know and among their loved ones. And, and this is like a complete joy, if you like. Look what we expect like a priest, like to, to how to the priesthood to be. It says the second prayer, and you will hear it in the con uh, ordination like in a few moments from now. It says, O oh God, great in might and inscrutable in wisdom, marvelous in counsel above the sons of men, do thou the same, Lord, fill with the gift of thy Holy Spirit this man, the one who is ordaining. Fill with the gift of the Holy Spirit this man whom it hath pleased thee to advance to the degree of priesthood, that he may be worthy, that he may be worthy to stand in innocence, like with a very angelic mind, with a very pure and innocent mind, before thine altar to proclaim why what's his uh, ministry to proclaim the gospel to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of thy kingdom to minister the word of thy truth to offer unto thee spiritual gifts and sacrifices to renew thy people through the lever of regeneration that when he shall go to meet thee at the second coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, thine only begotten Son, the priest, the newly ordained, he may receive the reward of a good steward in the degree committed unto him through the plenitude of thy goodness, for blessed and glorified is thine all-holy and majestic name, of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. This is like a, an agenda, if you like. This is a just description in this like language, in the business language. So I'm giving him this kind of jobs description. If he doesn't do that, this kind of priesthood we don't need in our church. I'm telling you, I am very sincere and, and very honest about, about the priesthood. Like to add an ember and to add someone to say, in peace let us pray to the Lord and he is careless about the people and we don't need that person to be a priest. So that's why the authority given to the Metropolitan Archbishop is like when I see someone, and by the way, five years, it has been like since I became the Metropolitan Archbishop, five years. Do you know how many priests, you know, like I said goodbye and I laicize them? Do you know, do you have any idea? Seven. They are no longer, they are gentlemen now roaming somewhere. So, beloved in Christ, we don't, have, we don't have to think of this way. He doesn't have to be terrified by that. He doesn't have like, to be afraid like some, someone will judge him. No, let us you know, trust God. Let us trust God. And 
no one will bother that person. But when some priest careless is careless, is hurting his people, his, he, 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 he is taking it like as a job just for money, I take care of that. I take care of that. So, but the priesthood is a great gift in our life. The Holy Spirit is giving that person a special gift to heal, to teach, to guide, to, to, to be a father, to be a friend to everyone, to be, you know, like down to earth, to be approachable, to be, you know, like with the people all the time. And to be, above all, to be ready to sacrifice because life of the priesthood is completely different than anything else. You know, I said to a priest once upon a time, I said like he is with cigarette all the time. I said, Father, if someone will come to you in confession and tells you that I have this kind of vice of smoking, what do you tell him if you yourself in like a smoker? He said to me, you know what? You are true. You are right. So therefore, beloved in Christ, life after a priesthood is completely different than before. The pre before. If the people are smoking, the priest cannot do that. If the, if the people are like greedy about something, the priest cannot do that. If the priest, you know, like if the people are, are gossiping about each other, the priest cannot do that. On the contrary, he is the healer of all these things. Now he's young, he's young. He will get it little by little. He will get the experience. When after he hears confession, after he, he, he have, he will have after he will have like some chance to hear the people's problems, what kind of problems they have, he will mature because of that. He will mature. He will become like stronger and stronger. You know, like going through all the problems, all the tragedies, all the ups and downs, all the, all the you know, like hardships, if you like. Some people will be crushed and will be, you know, like broken more and more. But some people become, will become like stronger because of that. So beloved in Christ, this kind of priesthood we need in order to heal every situation in our church. You know, you come here Saturday or Sunday or during the week and whatever. You come here for healing. You come here for renewal. You come here for like peace. You come here for holiness. You come here for like a new life in you, in, 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 you know, like a new life. So the church has to offer to you all that. Some people, you know, like when they see new people, immediately they rush to them in the church and they say, you know, like you become members and we need, you know, like your dollars and whatever. You, I say to them, you're dreaming. You will not get any dollars from those people. After the people, they feel that church is offering them something doesn't belong to this world. Not only they give you dollars, but they give you all their life and all their commitment. So the church is not about like to collect, you know, like some dollars from here and from there. That is a business. That is a business. And I am fighting against that. So the church, the people, when they feel that the, they are receiving the message of God, they are receiving, you know, like what they are looking for, so they give and they become committed more and more, whether financially or anything else. So beloved in Christ, the, the, the priesthood is not like from yesterday or from, you know, like as a gift, as the, the way we give, you know, ourselves like gifts here and there. It's not like that. This priesthood is forever. 
This priesthood is a gift from heaven, from the Holy Spirit himself. So the paraclete, paraclete means the Holy Spirit, is working through all of us. Today we are praying for Christopher to be a good deacon, and he has been a good deacon, and now to be called to be a good priest, a good father. Maybe he is younger than most of you, but through his priesthood, you have to call him father because the priesthood makes him that kind of person. So I don't like any priest, and I say it to myself as well, I don't like any priest to be a liturgical robot. Every day, make time for yourself to read, make time to be with your family, and make time for visitations, visiting people. When you organize yourself, when you organize your life, everything goes well. You know, I can tell about Father David Cruz, your father-in-law, by the way. Once, when I gave him the assignment, now, I explained it, you know, like this is a wrong expression, even in English, you know, like you understand it, but it's a, a, a wrong uh, expression. We don't have... We don't have this expression in the church as a spiritual expression, like an assignment given to this person. No, every priest, he is sent to the people, to the community. He, he is sent. Like the blind from his birth, when Jesus did, made some like dirt and he put it on his eyes, he said to him, go to the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So I was sent to my community. I was sent to this archdiocese. And he is sent now to where he's going to serve. So this is a better expression than we use the secular one, like assignment. So when Father David Cruzy was sent to Palm Springs, and he and his wife, Kuriye Karen, is here somewhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the children were little and were so they went to Palm Springs, like it's in the summer is 115. And people are not there. And he was like, he wanted like to give something like to, to be active and to be, you know, like dynamic. And finally, he asked me to leave from Palm Springs. What did I tell you? Stay there and accept this sacrifice and you will see it will grow you know and the seeds will grow and will blossom right you remember so therefore beloved in christ now they are happy there they are bringing like more joy into the people's life the church thank god we have a beautiful church and you know god has has, has seen and has blessed the work of his hands. And this good lady also, you know, was committed like to do the chanting and to do everything. And the children, when they were, before they went on their own, so they were like the choir, the priest and his wife, you know, like the, most of the church, you know, like uh, a quarter of the church, I would say. So therefore, beloved in Christ, everything has to be with patience. Everything has to be, you know, like God's time, not like the bishop's time or, or the priest's time, but God's time. So thank God, you know, like for accepting this kind of sacrifice and thank God for your ministry and what you're doing there. Beloved in Christ, look how important the priesthood in our life. <clears throat> There is, there is a holy man. There is a holy man. His name is Cosmas. Cosmas. He was asked one day about the priesthood. He said, if you see a king, no, before king, if you see an archangel coming to you and the priest on the other side Ignore the archangel and go and greet the priest first and kiss his hand. On the other hand, he said, if you see a king, his, her, his majesty, 
on one uh, on one side of the street and you see another like miserable priest or poor priest or humble priest you know like somewhere leave the his majesty and the king and go and greet the priest and kiss his hand because the priesthood is more important than the archangel himself and the king himself so the priesthood beloved in christ is more important than anything else because it is a gift from god himself today i am doing the ordination but the effectiveness the ordination's effectiveness is not coming from me but from the barclete himself from the the holy spirit himself so we give all the attention we give all the respect we give all the honor to the priest to any priest to any priest because he is the icon of god so that's why beloved in christ some people say you know like i have a problem i have a difficulty like kissing his hand why why when when you see in him in this person you see the icon of god it's not difficult anymore this is the way you know like we grow up in the faith doesn't matter you know like if i was born in the faith or we converted to the faith later doesn't matter the time is not important but the most important thing this is the orthodox way and this is the ethos the orthodox ethos and this is the orthodox way we cannot say that to the priest hi hi buddy no we don't say that his name is father christopher hello father with respect you know it took me forever in the west when i lived here some clergy to teach them how to say thank god or master bless and whatever one of them said it, 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 it used to say to me on the phone hey bishop i have this problem you know hey bishop what kind of language so now he is respectful he's retired he is like he got it he he learned his lesson so today is a joy to be here in this uh, beautiful you know like uh, occasion on the, for this beautiful occasion the, the priesthood tomorrow another day the same service the same everything but a different day a different day a different you know god god will give us a different day in our life if we repeat the same words you know like from the same text doesn't mean that you know like it's boring or it's insignificant or uh, no every day is a new day in our life and god has blessed this day and this day and this day and every day so let us pray for christopher to be a good priest a good father he is young as i said but the holy spirit will speak through him the word of god will touch many people and tomorrow we have another another good one like ready to 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 be uh, ordained and a joy after a joy so god is has blessed us with many joys in our life beloved in christ so i pray for 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 him for his family to carry this this cross like seriously and patiently and patiently and they are children to grow up you know like now when when the children their children you know come to see me you know, like you have to see like you have to see like the way they greet me you know like they are not afraid around me and they feel that you know like i am grandpa for them of them and uh, and uh, th this is a normal thing you know like this is a very normal thing in our life so while you are around the priest you don't have to be terrified but you have to be respectful and honest and you know like ready to listen to to what he he wants to say every time every time the priest doesn't gossip like if like you are sitting in a some place some society some some gathering 
and they are gossiping and whatever and you have no place like for you to say any any anything you have to to be quiet they learn from your quiet when it is time for you to say a few things you have to say you know, like everything from the life of the church and from the bible and from the lives of the saints you cannot share you cannot share you know, like any any gossip any conversation like about gossiping and about this and about that always you have to be ready to convey a holy message to the people even by being quiet sometimes by being quiet that is a big lesson also I finish with, the, with this beautiful uh, uh, example by Saint Paisius, you know, like the one who has been canonized just like three years ago. So after I got to know this person in person, you know, like I visited him in Mount Athos more than once, and he was asked one day, there was a gathering like this, and he was asked, Father, what what what's the best miracle in our church in our life you know what he said without any delay without any hesitation he said the church the biggest the greatest miracle in our life is the church and those people were amazed you know like we know the church but why it is the great miracles he said to them the following and he used a quote this holy man used a quote from another holy man. That person is St. John Chrysostom. He said to them in that quote, Don't we go to the church as liars and as thieves and as like corrupt and whatever, and we leave the church as a new people, as repentant? They said to him, yes. He went on more. He said, don't we go to the church as wolves, as wolves, like we gossip and we snatch, you know, like each other, you know, like as we see here and there and there and there. And don't we leave the church as like angels? So the church is the greatest miracles, miracle in our life. The church is doing, is working miracles in our life daily. So beloved in Christ, the church the church is not the building. Someday we will move from here, from this like commercial area to a bigger place. So the church is not the building. Any time when we have a good amount of money, every time we, 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 we can move from one place to another. But the church, the real church is you, is you. The temple of the Holy Spirit is you, every one of us. So that's why we are in the church every day. Like to, to change, to improve, to become better people. To act like, like God's mind. This is the church, beloved in Christ. Now we are happy. We have this building. We have many icons, whether Byzantine or Russian or Western and whatever. And we are satisfied and we are the happiest. But nothing changed in my heart, in my mind, in my tongue. I am still a big mouth. I am still like a gossiper. I am still doing this and that and following, you know, all the evil uh, uh, paths. This is not the church. The church is like we, we become hear the word of God and go back as angels and as new people, as a new people. This is the church. And a healthy church like this begets and produces beautiful clergy. Beautiful clergy, holy clergy. So today we are praying for the holiness of the priesthood in our life to make a big difference in our life. God bless you all. <clears throat>
Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace, wisdom. That God did always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. No one who is bound with the desires and pleasures of the flesh is worthy to approach or draw nigh or to serve thee, O King of glory. For to serve thee is a great and fearful thing even to the heavenly powers. Nevertheless, through thine unspeakable and boundless love for mankind, thou didst become
the grace divine which always heals. <clears throat> that which is infirm and completes that which is lacking elevates through the laying on of hands. Christopher, the most devout deacon, to be a priest. Wherefore, let us pray for him that the grace of the own Holy Spirit may come upon him. God, who has no beginning and no ending, who art older than every created thing, who crownest with the name of priest those whom thou deemest worthy to serve the word of thy truth in the divine ministry of this degree, do thou the same Lord of all deign to preserve in a pureness of life and in unswerving faith this man Christopher upon whom through me thou has graciously been pleased to lay hands be favorably pleased to grant unto him the great grace of the Holy Spirit and make him holy thy servant in all things acceptable unto thee and worthily exercising the great honors of the priesthood which thou hast confirmed, confirmed upon him by thy prescient power. For thine is the might, and thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O God, great in might, and inscrutable in wisdom, marvelous in counsel above the sons of man. Do thou the same, Lord, fill with the gift of thy Holy Spirit. This man, Christopher, whom it hath been pleased, pleased thee to advance to the degree of the Holy Priest, that he may be wor worthy to stand in innocence before thine altar, to proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom, to minister the word of thy truth, to offer unto thee spiritual gifts and sacrifices, to renew thy people through the lever of regeneration, that when he shall go to meet thee at the second coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, thine only begotten Son, he may receive the reward of a good steward in the degree committed unto him through the plenitude of thy goodness. For blessed and glorified is thine all holy and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen.
Micah. Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with an all holy, good, and life giving spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Church, 
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and with thy is meet and right to him thee to bless thee to praise thee to give thanks unto thee and to worship thee in every place of thy dominion for thou art god ineffable inconceivable invisible incomprehensible ever existing and eternally the same thou and thine only begotten son and thy holy spirit thou it was who this bring us from non-existence into being and when we fallen away this raise us up again and this not cease to do all things until thou had brought back brought us back to heaven and have endowed us with thy kingdom which is to come for all these things we give thanks unto thee and to thine only begotten son and thy holy spirit for all these things for all things of which we know and of which we know not and for all the benefits bestowed upon us both manifest and unseen and we give thanks unto thee also for this ministry, which thou dost vouchsafe to receive at our hands. Even though there, is, uh, there stand beside thee thousands of archangels and ten thousands of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six wings, many eyes, soaring aloft, born on their pinion. Sing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and singing the Lord. given thanks and blessed it and hallowed it and broken it he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles saying take it this is my body which is broken for you for the remission of sin Drink ye all of this. This is my my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. the resurrection and the third day the ascension into heaven the session at the right hand and the second and glorious coming thine own of thine own we offer unto thee in behalf of all
give thanks unto thee, O Lord, and we pray unto thee, O our God. Again, we offer unto thee the spiritual and loveless words, and beseech thee, and pray thee, and supplicate thee, send down thy words upon us, and upon these gifts here, spread thy hands, and make this bread the precious body of thy Christ. Precious blood of thy Christ, Amen. Changing them by thy Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Father Christopher, receive thou this pledge, this holy lamb, and preserve it whole and unharmed until thy last breath, because you shall be held to an accounting thereof in the second and awesome coming of our great Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. especially our all holy immaculate most blessed and glorious lady the Theotokos and ever virgin Mary mindful, O Lord, of this city in which we dwell, of ev and of every city and countryside, and of those who in faith dwell therein. Be mindful, O Lord, of those who travel by sea, land, and air, of the sick, the suffering, captives, and their salvation. Be mindful, O Lord, of those who bear fruit and do good works in thy holy churches, and who remember the poor, and upon us all send forth thy mercy. Among the first, me mindful, O Lord, of our Father and Patriarch John and the Holy Synod of Antioch, whom do thou grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, and faithfully proclaiming the word of thy truth.
one heart to glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. our God from thy holy dwelling place and from the throne of the glory of thy kingdom and come to sanctify us O thou who sittest on high with the Father and art here invisibly present with us and vouchsafe by thy mighty hand to impart unto us thine immaculate body and precious blood and through us unto all the people O God be gracious unto me a sinner in heaven. Ya Allah, ighfir li an al-khati wa hamli, O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. Let us attend the holy gifts are for the holy. Thank you. 
to thee, O Lord. And I confess that thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who didst come into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And I believe that this is truly thine own immaculate body, and that this is truly thine own precious blood. Wherefore I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and of deed, of knowledge and of ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thine immaculate mysteries, unto the remission of my sins, and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystic supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant. For I will not speak of thy mystery to thine enemies, neither will I give thee a kiss as to Judas. But like the thief will I confess thee, remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom, not unto judgment, nor unto condemnation. Be my partaking of thy holy mysteries, O Lord, but unto the healing of soul and body. jubilation for the word of the Lord is true and all his works are in faithfulness in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, and let all the inhabitants of the world be shaken before him. aside the devices of the people, and he bringeth to naught the plans of princes.
abideth unto eternity, the thoughts of his heart unto generation and generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen for his inheritance. habitation which he prepared, he looked upon the inhabitants of the earth.
sanctification and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Let us go forth in peace.
to thee, O God, glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O God. I thank thee, O Lord my God, that thou hast not rejected me a sinner, but hast vouchsafed me to become a communicant of thy holy things. I thank thee that thou hast vouchsafed the unworthy to partake of thine immaculate and heavenly gifts. But, O Master, who lovest mankind, who didst both die for us and rise again, and didst bestow upon us these thy dread and life-giving mysteries, for the benefiting and sanctification of our souls and bodies, grant that they may be for me also unto the healing of soul and body, unto the averting of everything contrary thereto, unto the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart, unto the peace of my spiritual powers, unto faith and ashamed, unto love unfeigned, unto increase of wisdom, unto the fulfillment of thy commandments, unto growth in thy divine grace and the attainment of thy kingdom, that preserved by them in thy holiness I may ever remember thy grace, and henceforth live not unto myself, but unto thee our master and benefactor. And thus, when this life is ended in the hope of eternal life, I may attain unto everlasting rest, where the voice of those who keep festival is unceasing, and the delight of those who behold the ineffable beauty of thy countenance is boundless. For thou art the true desire and unutterable joy of those who love thee. O Christ our God in all creation, in it be forever. Amen. O Master Christ our God, King of the ages and maker of all things, I thank thee for all the good things which thou hast bestowed upon me, and for this partaking of thine immaculate and life-giving mysteries. Wherefore I pray thee, who art good and lovest mankind, keep me under thy protection and in the shadow of thy wings, and grant unto me with a pure conscience, even unto my last breath, to partake of thy holy things, unto forgiveness of sins and unto life everlasting. For thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of good things, and unto thee we ascribe glory, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O thou who willingly thus give thy flesh to me as food, thou who art a fire consuming the unworthy, consume me not, O my Creator, but rather pass through all my body parts and to all my joints, my reins, my heart. Burn thou the thorns of all my transgressions, cleanse my soul and hallow thou my thoughts. Make firm my knees and my bones likewise. Enlighten as one my five senses, establish me wholly in thy fear. Ever shelter me, guard, and keep me from every soul corrupting deed and word. Cleanse me, purify, and control me, adorn me, teach, and enlighten me. It show me to be a dwelling place of thy spirit, and in no wise the dwelling place of sin. That from me thy habitation through the entrance of thy communion, every evil deed and every passion may flee as from fire. As intercessors I bring to thee all the sanctified, both the leaders of the bodiless powers, the forerunner and thy wise apostles, and besides these thine immaculate and pure mother. Do thou receive their prayers, O my Christ, who art compassionate, and make thy servant to be a child of the light. For thou alone, O good one, art the sanctification and splendor of our souls. And to thee as God and Master, day by day we all ascribe glory. May thy holy body, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, be unto me for life eternal, and thy precious blood unto forgiveness of my sins. May this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness, and at thy fearful second coming make me the sinner worthy to stand at the right hand of thy glory, through the intercessions of thine all immaculate mother and of all thy saints. Amen. O all holy lady Theotokos, light of my darkened soul, my hope, my shelter, my refuge, my consolation, and my joy. I thank thee that thou hast accounted me worthy, although unworthy to be a partaker of the immaculate body and precious blood of thy Son. But do thou who gavest birth to the true light and light in the spiritual eyes of my heart, O thou who didst bear the fountain of immortality, enliven thou me who lie dead in sin. O compassion, mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me, and grant me humility and contrition of heart, and humility in my thoughts and deliverance from the bondage of my vain imaginings and account me worthy even unto my last breath to receive without condemnation the sanctification of the immaculate mysteries unto the healing of both soul and body, and grant unto me tears of repentance and confession that I may hymn thee and glorify thee all the days of my life. For blessed and glorified art thou unto all ages. Amen. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. 
For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sin. O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil ones. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From heaven thou dost receive divine grace, and by thy lips thou dost teach all to worship the one God and Trinity, O Venerable John Chrysostom, the All-Blessed. Worthily do we extol thee, for thou art an instructor that dost reveal things divine, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The Church is revealed to all as a brilliantly lit heaven, leading the faithful in the way of light. Standing therein we cry aloud, make firm the foundations of this house, O Lord. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without corruption bearest God the word in our truly theotokos, we magnify thee. Bless Father in the name of the Lord. May God of compassion upon us and bless us. May he show the light of his counsel upon us. Be merciful unto us. Amen. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Master us. May Christ our true God, through the intercessions of us all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, by the mind of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable body of powers of heaven, at the supplications of the honorable glorious Pro prophet forerunner and Baptist John, of the holy glorious and all audible apostles, of our fathers among, Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy we have now celebrated, of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, 
of St. Barnabas, the patron and protector of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of the Isaac, Dalmatus, and Faustus, whose memory we celebrate today, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. Through the prayers of our holy master, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. 